We or we morning thoughts from Joyful Vermont. Um, it's been a rough time period, and I think what what um, has gotten to me is I had to suddenly learn, you know, what I could eat, what supplements, vitamins to get rid of. I had to find out more about the meds I'm on and how they conflict with kidneys. Um, do research on why my lymphocytes are bad and then pass that on to the best I can do as nurse, nurse practitioner. And a, I think they're passing it on to a DO, doctor of osteopathy. I'm in an area where there are such, it's such a population boom that people cannot get even a GP. Um, I've been told it can take a year even to get a referral for a GP. I've been through, I think, five or six in the five years I've been here. And um, they just keep leaving or going someplace else. I had a nurse practitioner not want me, I think, because I have to take pain pills. And also, um, well, she seemed bothered by that. That was the bottom thing. And then she did say, well, my arachnoiditis was complicated which it isn't really. I mean, there's nothing anyone can do about it. So, um, but it's it's been a lot of temporal research, temporal medical appointments, trying to figure out my, um, I have now the, the daughter that was going to do the, um, a couple of years ago said she would be the PA and executor and, healthcare representative, then uh, unbeknownst to me, after I'd spoken to her Friday evening, called her sister, and I found out about five, four days later, uh, said she didn't want to have anything to do with me, or this, this, quote unquote, I guess my illness. Um, and that was sort of a blow. And I've written and haven't gotten any response. I've texted I've thought about contacting her husband. I love them very much. And um, that's been a blow to continually not understand. Um, if it's me personally, if I remind her of her childhood and all the suffering we went through, suffering she went through, terrible for children. And she was the eldest, so she, no doubt. But But then it seemed that she had blocked Blocked very bad things that had happened. I don't understand what the problem is or if it's a squeamishness of illness. Not everyone's cut out to hang in with hospice type, you know, might be a while for me. And actually, it might even be longer. I might have to live longer because the uh, GFR numbers went up in a week's time. So, uh, but my other numbers haven't. My lymphocytes, for example. So I'm having on my own to sort of troubleshoot, try to figure out. Do I have a, a blood cancer of some sort? Lupus? I don't know. And then I started having a person who befriended me um, become contrary as far as... Um, uh, just seem sort of to want a dire situation for me, <laughs> sort of bizarre uh, in a way. I don't know. I don't understand that either. But it's been a strange situation having a serious health issue and how people react to that. But I really came to a point where I need God. I'm not cut out for the temporal. And I realized that yesterday, that I am really done with the research I've had to do, the temporal aspects of being ill and having to um, follow up on appointments and health matters. Um, something happened with someone else involving the world a nasty thing, a very good friend backstabbing the person. 
which is going to affect income for someone who's a single parent. So I realize I, I'm not cut out for temporal things. I desire God. And so I just decided yesterday I am, I don't want to be involved particularly with illness, with my illness. Um, I did what I had to do as far as uh, eating, prop, you know, uh, cutting out things that aren't good for a kidney patient and that. But other than that, I... I'm interested in life lived for God. And I realized my yearning yesterday that I'd rather live not long and live with and for God than to be ensnared in the temporal aspects, even of medical situations. And so... Uh, Yesterday, I had terrible pain, and uh, my pain doctor hasn't prescribed the medicine that would be better for my kidneys, the pain medicine. Somehow, just has dropped the ball, and I've called, and they do this automated message thing back now, and then uh, I got sort of a, a little bit of a snarky response of um, not being critical, and uh, I had been to do another appointment. Well, I had just been there for appointment to get this pain medicine worked out, and it wasn't done, it wasn't accomplished. So I had to go ahead and take medicine that's bad for my kidneys. And I thought, that's okay, I don't care. Um, I had, I thought, well, I, I'm sort of a do things by the book things, be obedient, and and uh, do what I'm supposed to do, but I thought life like that isn't worth it. Uh, ensnared in the temporal, ensnared in the temporal, and um, decided I'm doing the best I can. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I did all that research and figuring things out. I cannot control or help what other people do or do not do. If I'm left sort of uh, hanging dry as far as medically, I can't help that. It's how the system is right now, where I am. And I couldn't help it that I was given this dye, MRI dye, uh, that is that ruined my kidneys. The hospital did that to me, not the good hospital, the bad one. <laughs> And I didn't realize it was the first time I was there back the week before Thanksgiving. And then back last spring, I had a, I think I had another dye one. And my pain doctor did find that and said, this is why you're, what happened to your kidneys. It was um, from the dye. And I researched it, and yes, dye is terrible for kidneys. Contrast dye and MRIs don't have it done. Don't take that risk on your body. Um, so I decided yesterday, back to God. <laughs> That's where I belong. I'm not cut out for the temporal world. And if it hastens my death, that's okay. I'm ready. I'm disappointed even that um, evidently going to be around longer. But that's if that's God's will, it seems to be now that I will uh, live through this, for now anyway. But I will be very unhealthy. And uh, still don't know then what's wrong with the lymph, lymph system. And other, other scores are very bad in my blood. So we continue on, but I realize I need God too much. And... My focus has had to be for the last week on medical and on temporal matters. I'm horrified by what somebody did to a person. A good friend had backstabbed a person, someone I know. 
and it's going to affect their life. I, I'm, I, I guess it's because we've been talking about heaven too. And the striving for pure love and all of this other that I've been embroiled with and heard about and um, not, that, not that the health, is, health system hasn't been wonderful. The one doctor at the ER was outstanding, reaching out for me. But then that doctor didn't come through. Said he was, but it wasn't truth. So I'm running into all this human element. Boom. It just blew up in my face. All this temporal world stuff was laid before me. And I'm sure God did for a reason for me to be reminded that's the temporal world. And uh, this person that kept um, sending me private messages about this and that health-wise. And I finally yesterday told the person, I'm not interested in it. I don't want to talk about it. I'm moving on. I'm moving back to my life in God, my spiritual life. So I'm going to be working on more videos. And um, there's really nothing more I can do health-wise. I've done my duty. I can't control what others, what's happened, or what others choose. I was going to try to reach out again to the family member, and I thought, no, I've tried and tried for several years to find out, you know, what what are the, the issues, and I've apologized and asked forgiveness for whatever faults I've had or uh, things that uh, that were upsetting to the person. And so sorry, I'm so sorry. But it's not changing anything for the other person. Uh, so I'll just keep praying. But my work is for the spiritual world. And to do whatever I can while yet alive. To get my own soul progressed in love, in pure love. And I'm going to do another video on that, on more thoughts on when a forbearance is the right choice. But are we to forbear wrongs? I don't know. I think we have to discern what wrongs. And do we forbear when people have put a block up and aren't responding to us or don't want to speak to us. Well, we love them, but do we keep knocking, knocking, knocking? I don't know. I'm, I'm praying about that. I think we have to discern the situation. And why keep pushing on doors that aren't, aren't opening or knocking when it only aggravates the person more or causes them to reject more. That, to me, seems time and effort is better used on um, praying or spiritual aspects of other people and letting the ones that block us, let them go. Let them go. But be like the prodigal father. When they come back, be overjoyed if they come back. And so I, I might talk more on that. I guess I've already mentioned it. But um, so anyway, I, I realized I don't care if I live or die. What I care about is God and learning to love in more purity helping those who want help, praying for those, praying for everyone, loving everyone, forgiving the people who decided to do die contrast on me. I think it happened two or three times in the last six months. And um, God allowed it, though. God allowed, so he obviously wants me to have this experience. 
And what I learned in one week's time or so, maybe nine days it's been, ten days today, was the temporal is not my place, not my natural world. And I need God. I need focus on that. That's where my joy and sustenance is. Not in talking about kidney ailments or I've done all the research I can do. I can't do more without a GP to explore further or order blood tests for why my lymphocytes and other scores are so terrible still um, and have been. Um, And just take what comes. And I had to take a pain med yesterday, an extra one. My pain was out of control. I was pointless and useless with the pain overloaded. And I can't help it that the pain doctor's office has started this automatic, remote, very cold responses through text that are that are just, um, you know, you have to have another appointment to talk about it. When I had just been there three hours before kind of thing. And it wasn't followed through on what we talked about. So... I can't can't force other people to understand if it were their body, they wouldn't want to be taking medicine that's damaging their kidneys. I can guarantee you medical people wouldn't. But I had to, and I will, and I thought, I remembered my vow of suffering in which I very much offered to God that if it comes down to suffering, I'll be willing even to take paths of suffering that are worse than what would ordinarily be, that would prolong my life of suffering, if that be the will of God. So he's prolonging my life of suffering. God is allowing this through human error, through people not being able to grasp what they would want if they were in my body. (laughs) And um, so I'm going to have to take that which will further compromise my kidneys. Can't help it. I had to come to that choice. Am I going to be uh, crazy from pain, unable to function, unable to think, no recall, crying, emotions out of whack, Or am I going to at least be able to pray with purpose and read scripture and maybe get up a little more? Better take care of my dogs, these two creatures that have been so loyal and loving that God has given me as gifts. Two little innocent dogs. So um, be able to give them more than being in bed, and yes, they love being on the bed with me, but um, they also need some exercise and being up and about. And um, so that's what I realized. If this hastens my death, all is gain. Isn't that what Paul said? Death to me is gain. And so I'll detach from... Uh, more more of the medical and um, I go back I think in a month not six five weeks or so to the nurse practitioner grateful to have anyone <laughs> I'm not well enough well I, I could go back to a different to the Midwest to a capital city back there where I would easily get doctors to help me but I would need help at this point. I would need help to make the flight and or to be have a place to stay. And that isn't happening. That door has been closed off. So um, another probably other friends would, but they live in an area that's not with the where I could get the better medical. So, We give in, let go, get back to where I belong. 
in Scripture, in Holy Spirit, Jesus and God the Father, in prayer life more, then looking up, you know, lupus, all of the all of my bad tests lined right up with lupus nephritis and other forms of lupus. <clears throat> then I had this other person who had retired nurse, but no, that's only for young people. And of course, it's not. 30% of people with lupus have elderly onset lupus. So, you know, I'm not going to be fighting with a retired nurse who is in very poor health herself and keep and telling told me I would have less than a year to live by her calculations all this stuff it's been amazing the people who for their own reasons practically wanted me to be worse and when I wrote and said and gave these scores oh I'm so sorry it's worse I said no it's better it's much better the GFR is much better they're thinking that my filtration is turning around. Now my kidney damage, who knows how bad it is and whether that will ever turn around. But um, I'm here uh, unless this, uh, whatever's going on with my bad lymphocytes, if that's eating away at me after yesterday and just all of the roadblocks with the temporal world I rarely look at the news. I looked at some news headlines, and I'm praying for the Princess of Wales. I really like Catherine and her husband. Oh, my goodness, how can I forget his name? William. <laughs> I think they're lovely people. I'm praying for her. She's in the hospital with surgery. I'm praying for little Leo and... Um, Sean's family and Carrie Ann, if she's on earth or in heaven. Either way, I'm praying, praying for all these people I've been given to pray for. And I have a new one, another new one to pray for. Uh, so I'm praying for a best friend of a family member who backstabbed the family member and is putting her career in jeopardy as a result, and was a horrible shock to be backstabbed in, a, um, in her career in a most ugly way. And the person who agreed to go along with the backstabber. Uh, no honor in that. So I'm praying very much for that. Ask ask you to pray for my family member uh, who's remained very positive and professional at least outwardly inwardly of course it would hurt terribly and future is now in jeopardy so of something loved and her income as a single parent so um, praying for that of course, I was horrified when I found out what had happened and who had done it. But Jesus went through that with Ju Judas, didn't he? Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and the Lord will repay. And that's sad. This backstabber put on her Facebook a believer and... Uh, Mentions now and then, you know, went to church, took the children to church. Fine. But um, I'm praying that the person understand Christianity is not to do harm and not treachery either. But that's, again, out of my control, other than prayer. But do we forbear? We can forgive, but do we uh, hang with people like that? Um, I've been hearing a lot about narcissism now on online. There, a lot of people are talking about it and getting away from narcissists. Um, 
They ruin marriages. They ruin people. They harm children in marriages. And, uh, you know, we're to love with, forbear with love one another. But did Jesus mean with evil? Do we forbear evil? So that will be something I'm going to ponder and talk about. And then I've had other books I just also thought about. I've got notes in one of my notebook on a really old book on the choirs of angels that I read several years ago. And it's fascinating information, invaluable information. So I want to find that notebook and do a video on that. So, and then I remembered um, some sort of humorous stories that are also pathetic, things that the temporal church can clear up, and hopefully most priests would not do these things. But um, it was a humorous situation, and God, through supernatural means, put me onto it in a fun way. It was a humorous, I thought it was humorous, but um, a bishop didn't, the late bishop didn't, He and he didn't do anything about it. I would have been on the phone immediately talking to the priest about what they had been duping the parishioners with. <laughs> so the lengths we go to, we humans, we are human. But the spiritual is where our minds, hearts, souls, and, and bodies even ought to be. At least that's where mine has to be. I cannot deal i i god closes doors in the temporal for me thank thanks be to god we'll talk to you later and it's just my little update thank you so much for the prayers and i'm grateful i guess i need to be saying thank you lord that my gfr numbers went up and whatever's going on with the other bad numbers i'll take it as it comes lord Nothing more I can do about it medically myself. I'm without resources. So I'm uh, moving away from that and back to where my heart is. And my, my soul, heart, and mind crave and love the spiritual. And applying it to everyday life and trying to be very proactive prayer person for others. Thanks again. Guess it's going to be daylight, not before too long. <laughs>